we are going to look now to an efficient algorithm in the fail silent model for causal broadcast. This algorithm will not use failure detectors. It will have a very compact representation of messages traversing between nodes. And the algorithm uses a vector timestamp or a vector clock. So let us look to it now. So again, our main idea is with each broadcasted message, we will carry a history. In this case, we will carry a very compact history. And before delivery of the message, we make sure that causality is enforced. Again, our first algorithm, the history was a set of all causally preceding messages. In this second algorithm, we are going to use a vector timestamp. So let us begin. So we are going to represent past history by a vector clock, and we will slightly modify the vector clock implementation. At any node PI, now the field of the vector clock that corresponds to PI will store the number of messages PI causally broadcasted and delivered. So at any time, will be the number of messages that causally broadcasted and delivered. And in any other field, it will be the number of messages that has been causally delivered by PI from PJ. So let us look to an outline of the algorithm. So upon a causal broadcast of a message M, we piggyback the vector clock with the message and reliably broadcast the message. There is one property that we are going to use and we are going to keep in mind. If we look to any field at the vector clock associated with the message, for, at, for example, process R, so there will be here stored a number. And this number is the number of messages causally preceding M that is delivered from R. So the field at any field in the vector clock, we have the number of messages causally delivered from that process. So upon reliable delivery of the message M with the attached vector clock M, we compare VCM with the local vector clock and what can happen when we do the comparison? If the vector clock associated with a message is less or equal the local vector clock, then we deliver. Otherwise, we do not deliver the message. I mean, we do not deliver the message either if the vector clock associated with a message is greater than the process vector clock or they are not comparable, okay? They are not equal, they are not comparable. And let us see, understand this. So let's assume now that VCM is a vector clock which has the value one, two, and zero. And this vector clock, and this message is sent from processor, or from process P2. So let us see. So one here means that process P2 at the time of sending the message M, there was one delivery of a message from process P1. Okay, so, so one delivery from P1. And also two earlier B cost. Okay, or causally broadcast message from P2. It says only that there is earlier two broadcast message from P2. And it says also zero delivery from P3. So now if we look to the delivery of this message at process P3. 
So we look now to VC3 and we look to it and see, okay, our local vector clock says 2, 1, and 0. But this means the following. It means, okay, we have two delivery of messages from P1, process P1, that's fine. But we have only one delivery of message from P2, whereas this message M have already seen and it's causally after two messages from uh, process P2. Therefore, at this stage, we cannot deliver this message at process P3. On the other hand, if we have V3 equal 2, 2, 0, means that we have seen all earlier messages from P2, we have two deliveries from P1, and in this case, definitely VCM is less than VC and equal, it's less than or equal VCI, therefore we can deliver M. So we deliver M. And that's exactly what we have been uh, doing. So we can deliver a message if the events, delivery events associated with uh, the message is strictly less or equal the delivery events that happened at the processor, that is the target. Okay. Otherwise, we don't deliver. So let us see it again with an execution scenario. Here is our initial vector clocks at each process. So the green vector clock will be the vector clock associated with each process. And let's see what happens here. What we have is a broadcast of a message M1 from P1. With this message, we have the following vector, which says basically we have seen nothing. There is no preceding message from any process. Here, M1 is delivered at process P1. So we increment our local vector clock to reflect this. Same thing happens here. We deliver M1 here, and we, now we have to look. There is nothing here. All messages causally preceding M1 are also have been delivered. In this case, no message at all, which is fine. So we deliver M1. And once we deliver M1, we know now we increment this field saying, uh, we have one delivery from M1. Now we start another B cost from M2. And this B cost, we have one thing. We say that there is one preceding message from P1 and zero from the others. And we deliver this message here. So the local vector clock inc is increased by two at the first field. Now, more interestingly are these two messages. First, we have a delivery here. This delivery is fine because we have seen already one message from P1 associated with the message. And also we have seen one message. So that's fine. This message we haven't seen yet, we can deliver and we increase the vector clock here. Here is more interesting situation. Why? Because at this point, the message tell us there is one event preceding, causally preceding M2 that happened at P1, but the processor vector timestamps does not know about this. So we hold the message here. Now, when this M1 arrives, we can deliver M1 now we can increase this count. Now we have seen one. Now we can again deliver M2. So now after we have seen an execution scenario that gives us the intuition about how things are executing, let us look to the algorithm. With the initialization, we have a vector timestamp at each process initially initialized. Every field is initialized to zero. And then we are going to use something that I call a sequence number. And this sequence number is going to be used to ensure that messages broadcasted from the same process will be delivered at that process in the order that they were broadcast. So remember, we have this FIFO property of causality. And then we are going to have 
a list initially empty of a set of bending processes. So that is fine. So what happened now when we get an event to broadcast a message M? We make a copy of our local vector clock and that copy we store in it the current sequence number in that field, the field itself, and then we trigger a reliable broadcast with this new vector clock. So this is our vector clock M, I would say. And then we increase the sequence number by one. So let us see, here we understand, assume for example we initially start from one process, this process the sequence number is zero, so the first time W will have the value zero for that field, and if we start another broadcast, the second message will have the value one. So we are increasing the sequence number so that we do not deliver the second message before the first message. Now, when we get a delivery event from PJ of this message, we add the processor PI, we need the PI, and the message on the pending set, and then we execute deliver pending. And deliver pending will exactly do what we have said before, is that we look to any pending message and see if its vector clock timestamp for that message is less than the current local vector clock, we remove the message from the pending list, we now increment the field of the local vector clock to denote that we now have delivered one more message from process SM and then we causally deliver the message to the higher level.